Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Reborn 13 podcast with the Genie. Now as you may have noticed it has been some time since I've been active on my YouTube channel but today I am back and I have an exciting podcast lined up for you guys because I have a very special guest on who goes by the name of the Bonafide Plug. Now, if I might say, the Bonafide Plug has an incredible mind and his insights with regards to crypto and also spirituality are mind-boggling. And I genuinely thought there would be no better guest for me to re-begin my journey, restart afresh on my YouTube, to bring him on, to have a conversation and to give you guys as much insight into not only your own ascension process, your own self-mastery and the spiritual nature of reality, but also tying that into the crypto market and techniques and strategies that you can utilize to integrate both into the whole and actually become a master of both the financial markets and yourself. It is quite a long conversation we have, but I promise you there are some amazing subjects which we touch upon and you want to make sure that you do not miss out on a second of this. So I would highly, highly recommend you sticking around to the very, very end with all that is in store. So without further ado, my friends, I really hope you enjoy this episode and make sure to go and give the Bonafide Plug some love over on his YouTube and Instagram. All links will be down below in the description below. But time to wrap up this intro and get into it. So thank you for having me, Reborn. How are you doing, sir? (laughs) Yeah, I'm very, very good. It is beautiful (laughs) to be back and it is even more wonderful to be here with a mind like yourself. Obviously, I've now followed you for some time now, or um, our first interaction, I could say, goes far back. And ever since that moment, I haven't really met someone with such an eye when it comes to both your kind of spirituality side, but also the crypto and the mastery that you have in that side and that space as a whole with regards to seeking out projects and tying that all into your dedication to just continuing to build yourself in terms of like your own self mastery, but at the same time, broadening and expanding your knowledge in crypto, in everything digital, which I admire and I've had many great tips from you. And that's the reason why uh, I brought you on the channel and this has come about amongst obviously many other things because you're now starting your channel. I guess we could then begin by just you rolling off, like telling me how you brought yourself into uh, the awakening journey or how it fell upon you. And then also mm-hmm. how that tied into crypto and um, just more about who you are brother, for the for the listeners. <laughs> Most definitely. Thank you for the flowers. I send them back to you. Uh, wow. Uh, what a great... <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. So, um, so the awakening itself, um, you know, <laughs> I feel as though the awakening itself is so multi multi-dimensional that it's sometimes so hard to like really put your head around and like really put a story around it. Right. But I've had a, a, a long time contemplating in how, how I could approach it and introduce it to people when they ask me. And a lot of time, what I say is I go with this story, which is, um, so at a, uh, at a young age, and when I say young, I'm talking maybe like 14, 15, I met a very interesting man in my life. And um, this man happened to be a medium. And so the moment I met him, he didn't introduce himself as a medium. In fact, he was actually um, my uh, somewhat of my pot dealer, if I may say. You know, in Canada, <laughs> weed is legal. But this man was actually interesting as a pod dealer you know when you meet some pod dealers they're more urban looking uh and such but this person was actually in a wheelchair he was over he was about 50 years old so he was quite different from any other uh pod dealers i had been and around that time i had just started smoking pot and in fact uh this man was very very interesting he he never really introduced himself as a medium or anything spiritual he was just very knowledgeable as a person. Even from the young age, I could tell that he was more knowledgeable than any teacher I've ever had. He was yeah. uh, super well versed in the scientific knowledge. Uh, um, he was he was just 
he, he had so much knowledge. It was incredible, but it was a lot of just scientific knowledge he had. Nothing spiritual until at some point he really started to talk to me about spirituality and he introduced himself as a, a medium who would talk to spirits and whatnot. And and all of a sudden what I what I realized was that I felt as though this part inside of me, this childlike feeling kind of came out like, wow, this is adding excitement to this world that somehow I let I let it become boring uh mm -hmm. at that point right yeah um and so eventually you know he would tell me things like well you know you can't you can't be a medium you're born a medium and i i remember i remember feeling kind of disappointed but also motivated to prove him wrong uh because i i didn't want to sit down uh, sit here and think like nobody's Nobody's not equal. Nobody has the equal opportunities to to become something, right? Mm -hmm. And so I went on this journey um, alongside with him up too as well because he he quite I, I I guess he was kind of like my mentor at some point. Um, and he would he would also be the first person and one of the only pe people I would talk to about spirituality when I had my awakening. But I remember. Um, you know, I was kind of searching for something at that point and trying to prove myself that I, I can be somewhat connected to this, to this world. And, you know, a lot of people ask me like, well, how, like, how did, did you kind of get interested in it to a point where you sort of believed what this person said? Well, I think it was more in regards to the fact that this person was so intelligent in terms of like, um, his scientific knowledge and stuff like that. And you wouldn't expect somebody of that nature to even be spiritual, at least like for the most part, it's very rare to meet these, those kind of people, right? That sound so rational and yet have this sort of spiritual side to them. Just really quickly interrupt you there because you hit on something which has like sprung up in my mind. And Absolutely. Go ahead. from my personal experience, I have found that it's actually something within our consciousness that we can resonate with that level of truth and integrity. And ingrained in yourself, in your soul development in this life, you have got to a place or you had gotten to a place previously without your knowing in this life yet that you are able to sense that level of integrity in someone else with the way in which they speak, but also with... A, a, a almost depth to them and Absolutely. funny enough right right on the dot is, right on the dot <laughs> that is exactly uh where my awakening or my awakening spawned in the same type scenario where i had never been exposed to anything of the spirituality awakening nature i was like asleep like i was fully asleep virtually for my entire childhood and my, my life up until my awakening point where it was the integrity and truth of that singular person that I had a conversation with, which flipped everything for me because I instantly noticed it. And I feel that that is a skill and a trait which has been developed over like eons in your soul to be able to resonate with that. So mm -hmm. I fully resonate with, with where you're going with this. So yeah, go on, keep going. <laughs> No problem. Actually, just to add into what you said, right? Um, in fact, like, as you said, I had never been presented to any spiritual concept beforehand. And what's interesting about that is that uh, my mom, on my mom's side, right? Uh, her family are actually Hindus, which is known to be a spiritual religion. Mm -hmm. But as at a very young age, I was very resistant to knowing anything about this religion because I was born in Canada. Yeah. And all this i like all this shenanigan let's say didn't interest me at all it, it, it sort of like uh threw me off and I, I never really delved into it i didn't even know the the idea that chakras were from uh my mom's religion even though i had watched shows like naruto which i was very into and it's, it's important to bring this because i find i find that it ties in so well into making you understand how I had no idea about chakras yet. That is one of the most prevalent um, 
subject in that show. And I didn't even know it tied into spirituality until my awakening. So um, it was as if it was meant to be the way it was done. And so just to go back into the story, right? Um, you know, I wanted to prove myself. And I, I was always that type of person that said, uh, you know, if if somebody tells me I can't do something, I got to do it. I got to do it just <laughs> just to prove myself that I can do it, whether it was yeah, in regards to school. Um, I didn't study a lot in school because I had already proven myself that I was incredibly great at school when it came to just trying. So I stopped trying at some point because I knew I was amazing at it because, um, you know, it's all about memory. And, and mm -hmm. I would convince other people that they also are really great and there's something they're not doing that's causing yeah. them to not be as great. Um, but anyways, fast forward, um, I realized there was actually something about uh, this mentor of mine uh, that was off. It was it was really off. And um, it seemed as though he, he's, he went through a lot of things. Um, he did have the spiritual knowledge and like the way he had the integrity, uh, the way he spoke, it, it was, it was in, in alignment with truth. But it seemed as though there was this lack of embodiment embodiment that came and it caused him to become homeless. Yeah. Um, and in fact, I went homeless with him because uh, we were going to move out together. We had we had built such a great connection. Mm -hmm. And by then, I still didn't even have my awakening. Um, and then fast forward, I remember uh, we, we were homeless for like two months and I. Uh, I didn't give up on him. He was in a wheelchair. It was incredibly hard uh, during the winter to be to be homeless. And I didn't want to go back to my parents' wow. house because I had um, I had vowed myself that I, I wouldn't. It, it would have been almost disappointing to them mm -hmm. that I left the house and now I don't have a home to stay. At. I just had too much pride back then. And so um, and I didn't want to leave uh, my, my mentor uh, out in the cold. So. We went through so much and eventually ended up finding a house uh, two months later uh, by the grace of the universe. And that was when I had my uh, awakening. And so my awakening was actually drug induced. Mm -hmm. uh, but around that time, I was very, very stressed, um, not even in regards to um, me being homeless or anything. But before meeting this man, I was actually around the wrong kind of people or at least the people that I wouldn't hang out with uh, right now and I kind of want to say that I started what I call downloading dark data at a very young age I wanted to experience things I wanted to uh, you know my father wasn't really there for me in regards to teaching me stuff and you know even sitting down with me and uh, giving me some sort of moralities and such and principles I had to learn those on my own uh, so I, I, I started hardening myself and trying to learn the world, trying to understand why could people become evil and hang with evil people to understand these people. Yeah. Um, and so eventually it kind of, uh, karma kind of came around and slapped me back in the head where I became so stressful and so self-conscious about, uh, everything that was going on at that time that, um, I remember I, I ended up taking some acid with, uh, with uh with my mentor and and i remember he, he it didn't hit him at all like he he <laughs> it didn't hit him at all he was, he thought i was joking when i was telling him like dude this is hitting this was the first time i ever did acid yeah and um i remember laying back down and i just had an outer body experience and um once i had this outer body experience it it was it was so hard to put words around it but the way i explain it is that i was I was sort of brought to see the world for what it was um, and see the ultimate truth at the level I was able to see it uh, back then. And oh, so God. it's by far uh, one of the most important things that's ever happened in my life. You said there that it showed you, uh, and I'll probably ruin your words in the way you said it, but it showed you an ultimate truth at the level you was able to comprehend and see it at that time. Yes. which is so important to understand because it is something which I've only come to realize in myself 
I'll say relatively recently, but it was such a profound insight when I did. And what I mean by that is that if you can understand in yourself and for everyone that what you see and what someone else sees from the same circumstance is completely different because your level of consciousness at that moment dictates what is being seen and the way it's interpreted, its meaning and its value which is given to it. So having that understanding, you are then able to actually comprehend how a uh, particular event could be viewed or described or um, essentially two different people could give complete different depictions of what was actually happening. Most definitely. It's important that we realize that within ourselves because that gives us the peace and almost wisdom to then be able to look at the world and the way people react to certain events and circumstances be like okay you just can't see it the way i see it and that's nothing wrong with you and there's actually nothing wrong with me but it's that humility to submit yourself to something higher and just continue to learn it's such a great point you add and i I want to emphasize on how um this experience that i'm talking about happened about three three or four years ago maybe more like three but it took me it took me some time to be able to like render it in such a way right um Mm -hmm. i when it first happened it wasn't something that i could really like describe in the the simplest manner as i'm trying to do it right now i should say um but just to continue on to the story actually so when when this happened, this actually was, I'd say, my real first awakening, my real first realization, you know, that there was something greater than I or greater than us that we probably weren't aware. And one of the biggest thing I realized in this specific um, outer body experience, which that, that's what it was, I had left my body, yeah. um, was to realize that this world was magical and that the magic was always being expressed in every single aspect that you could ever desire to see. And there was somebody out there that were, or some people out there that were able to, you know, leave their body, do all this, have a certain level of control to, um, to, 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 to be in contact with, with whatever this supernatural stuff was to a point where they controlled the world. Um, that was, that was instant. Because I had been in the system, I had seen what the system was for mm-hmm. what it was, but I never seen it in at that level. You know, when, yeah. once you leave your body and you see the world sort of outside of yourself, you start to take take notice of certain things that you probably wouldn't have noticed, uh, you know, inside of your body almost. But honestly, so, you're just hitting and triggering so many kind of fires in my mind right now. So essentially... <laughs> <laughs> what you're saying is the trip and the experience allowed you to get out of your own way. And yes. the way in which I like to describe this or depict this in my mind is that the reason why we can't understand is because we are in our own way. And the way I mean that or what I mean by that is that our beliefs and concepts which we hold block us from understanding. And the likelihood is that it's a whole load of trauma stored up, whether it be fear or whatever that be lying emotionally, but that's what's creating the block to the greater understanding. And Mm -hmm. the experience that you had, and obviously the trip, both of those combined, allowed you to do so. But what's so important in that is you having the humility to then once you come out the trip to rather than disregard it as something as mythological or um, illusionary in nature but actually take it and incorporate it back into yourself and then Mm -hmm. obviously transcend your previous self if you want to call it such to then expand to a greater awareness and i just wanted to add in something that i kind of forgot about the story that is actually very essential to it was that i did say i did the trip with my uh with uh with the mentor his name is michael uh so let's call him michael so uh i did do this with michael but i had another friend come over 
while I was tripping. And the reason why I realized that what I experienced was not a hallucination was because he was with me. And when I came back into my body, I started explaining it to him and I picked up right away. Um, there's this thing I do. So when I look at somebody in the eye, it's just, I guess it's sort of like some body language psychology, but when I look at somebody in the eyes, I could right away tell if they they see what I'm saying or not, right, type of thing. Yeah. And his yeah. eyes started wandering, and I was like, okay, well, you don't believe me. <laughs> and I remember, I remember being frustrated inside, not externally. Like, I wasn't showing it, but I remember it, it hurt me. It hurt mm -hmm. me. I allowed it to hurt me. And... At that moment, I remember I started seeing faces everywhere, like everywhere. And in fact, throughout the whole trip, I was seeing those faces, but it seemed as though those faces that I was seeing that were like almost in like a pattern um, reflected whatever I felt internally. Like I could almost see how uh, in while being in control of my emotion, when I was trying to be trying to see if I was being mad, what the faces would react to, they would react in a way where they would also look bad. Um, and so I remember those faces at some point when I, uh, that, and it's so funny because it's such a big part of this whole thing, right? But um, I remember the faces started acting up on their own. Um, and I guess it's, it's maybe trying to show that I had kind of lost control inside about this because I wanted somebody close to me to sort of understand where I was coming from. And yeah. I wouldn't, I, I didn't sort of get why a lot of people aren't built that way. Uh, and this is the reality. As much as I hate to admit it, as much as I hate to sound obnoxious about it, the reality of it is that some people are just not meant to understand you. Uh, I but doubt. It, it, it very much never was the case for me. I'm somebody who I find myself understanding people. And I, I can say this with, certain like certainty because people show me that i can and people have have often given me those um those accolades but anyways those faces started acting on their own and i remember i got somewhat more angry than i should have internally that the faces started coming out of the the walls and whatever wherever they were and they just surrounded my friend and I remember almost feeling like I had shifted dimension. It was no longer 3D. And the way I, I, I describe this is that it was almost like robot. Have you ever, I don't know if you're familiar with this show, but it's a show that I believe is probably Canadian called Robot Chicken, where they look very 3D, almost uh, Play-Doh-ish kind of look. Mm -hmm. And so I remember sh just seeing the world that way in complete darkness and my friend just gets surrounded by all of these faces in dark and my friend just has what i was what i would call now an induced kundalini awakening and the moment he had that he jumped into his bed and looked at me and he said what the f was that <laughs> and i i saw it all i saw it all with my eyes like obviously i was on acid but the fact that at first, when I first had the uh, the whole outer body experience, I was like, okay, well, this might be something. I, I give the benefit of doubt. This might be something that was in my mind. But when that happened right away, it clicked that this, whatever happened there, connects, transcends into the reality. No question. It was at that moment I knew that the spiritual, what, what people would define as spiritual world or whatever dimension they wanted uh, segmented as, transcends into our reality yeah no question and, and the thing is the awakening wasn't to a level where it, mine was because i remember the moment it happened and i saw him sort of shake all the way from his feet all the way to his spine i remember screaming stop yeah and it, it and all the faces went right back to uh to the walls or wherever they were kind of supposed to overlay on yeah. and 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 so i i think that i kind of it was sort of a semi awakening, but it wasn't something that like was uh, was what other people would describe as an awakening. I think it was just sort of like a electrifying somebody or some some sort of weird uh, weird trick there. Um, but I do think it was some it was definitely um, in parallel to what people consider a kundalini awakening. Yeah. Um, and and so, you know, 
after this experience, I had other experiences, you know, and I could delve in all of them very deeply. But I think what I really wanted to show is that once that awakening happened, I remember I ended up having a spiritual ego. I remember, I remember very clearly because the spiritual ego actually caused me to have much more wisdom than the awakening itself. And the moment I realized that I had a spiritual ego was when I started reading this book called Spiritual Materialism. And um, I recommend it to anybody who's going through a spiritual awakening uh, and, and, and it's prevalent to them uh, in the moment to read the spiritual materialism. I believe this book was written by uh, somebody who's from China. I'm not 100% sure, but it speaks about the idea that people give a lot of value to their awakening to a point where um, they lose touch with reality. Now, they don't exactly say it that way, but I think it's important to read those kind of books to kind of ground yourself and, and see how these awakening can be seen in different levels um, and to be able to embody each and every level so it can connect with others, right? The spiritual ego is almost like that trap which like lingers beyond your your sleeping ego, but sits there ready to get you like double time, like just to, to trap you once again. <laughs> and it's insanely hard to transcend that part, but it's such an important and integral part of the awakening process. Yes, because again, the awakening is not just one epiphany, but it, it is a process. And in fact, yeah. you know, what I wanted to, to lay out is that after having all these spiritual experiences, what I realized was I've been going through an awakening the moment I opened my eyes from my mom's womb. <laughs> and the moment you realize that, that every single thing you've ever went to through has an infinite amount of expression, including that one layer or uh, part that you would call spirituality, then you realize pretty much that what people in the spiritual community or people that consider themselves spiritual are trying to make you realize. And often they don't even realize <laughs> themselves. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's that you don't need an awakening to, to find yourself being spiritual because intrinsically you are a spiritual being. And, and so I speak about this thing called the minus infinite and the plus infinite um, uh, phenomenon. So I explained that we exist in an infinite amount of dimensions, but a lot of people talk about 5D to segment things a lot. We, we've, our mind always allows ourselves to segment things, whether it's in dimension, whether it's the word spiritual, all these things are just segmentation of reality. Yeah, but absolutely. when I, exactly. And when I, when I was able to, to say that I really feel as though I'm an actual uh, I, I've, I've, I've really undergone through this whole spiritual process at a level that most people may not have to, may not have gone through. Uh, and again, I'm still falling into segmentation as I'm saying this well aware, but it was when I went through the level of oneness, when I saw that everything was infinite, but I was able to put it as one. And the moment you're able to do that, you often realize that everybody, every expression, every laugh, every cries every this or that is an expression of this thing that most people like to call spirituality yeah and, and uh, that's as simple as it gets right and i know you read this book that by far is my favorite book of all time it's a very short book called the way by Lao Tzu. Mm -hmm. um i'm a big fan of chinese philosophy and i think chinese philosophy does a great job simplifying something that's very hard to understand and that's what it is right it's the polarity of, of, of the fact that this is a concept that's not very easy to grasp, but yet it's very simple in its nature. Well, that's it. You've hit the nail on the head with that because the ultimate wisdom from what I've experienced is the ability to incorporate individualism into unity. And a lot of people get lost and I myself have done in the spiritual quests whereby you go so far into oneness you almost lose your individuality in that you lose the uh, value that you gain from being an individual because you go through that process of learning almost the um 
the light nature of the world in the sense that you realize how empty some of the pleasures that you were seeking are, how so much of what people pin their lives to have so little meaning in, in truth, in reality, in the grand scheme of things. But then you slowly come to realize that it's a joy and it is meaningful in itself. So you then rebegin to incorporate both the individual aspect of yourself, but now you do it from a unified perspective where you don't see any separation, but you can almost celebrate your individuality amongst the unity. But that, that process, that, that learning, that integration is the, the highest of skill sets to be able to do such but mm -hmm. it's a level of mastery if you can combine that together if you can take oneness and your individual self and live together in wholeness so it is paradoxical in nature but it comes together then that's when that spark ignites that for me is what is meant by enlightenment is the, the total flow amongst all the chaos and mm -hmm. bringing in essentially allowing your soul to reflect itself amongst all of the destruction all of the darkness and being your own light and it really is something which once you experience it everything else has it, it, there is nothing that I can possibly describe which comes close to living in that constant state of I guess it's understanding or whatever you want to term it because it, it essentially can't be described but it is the ultimate and pinnacle and whether people realize it or not and like you say from day one from the moment they're born and all preceding lives they've all been culminating to bring you to that that very moment in in time which exists in eternity right i guess what, what we're getting to is the idea that all of us are a unique focal point of consciousness and it's important to celebrate that despite the fact that we are also all one and you know a, a, a problem not a problem but i think an objective of the spiritual community is to convince other that we're living in the spiritual world but the separation it, it creates intrinsically that separation that other people that from trying to kind of insinuate that other people don't understand it but what i've noticed when i speak about spirituality to people who don't consider themselves spiritual if i may say mm -hmm. um from their own personal choices right yeah is that they totally at the very core understand what i'm saying they just don't acknowledge it at the level i am and there's no problem with that because as i was explaining with the minus infinite and the plus infinite is that there is no highs there is no lows mm -hmm. it, it's it, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's almost like a sphere that that's always rolling and you you can't find the highs or the lows or the left or the right there is no such thing because at these at that moment you start to think in in levels but there is no such thing as level as well. Those things, though, those levels, those segmentation that we add do play a part in our experience and they do allow us to, um, you know, get the places that we want, but they're not as valuable as people make them seem. So that's really my my whole diatribe of my spiritual, <laughs> my spiritual, <laughs> uh, my spirituality, if I may so. And I hope, I hope that other people, um, find themselves in this conversation because I know that it can be a uh, somewhat of a lonely path at some point. And, you know, we start to look for information online because people around us don't get anything, but uh, that we're saying, but hopefully, you know, you know, we get to, to this point, you know, well, that's um, where that's in my own experience uh, through my platform, through reborn 13, I have obviously now had, I mean, I have no idea that as to the number of conversations which I've had with people, uh, both by message and obviously through actual, uh, like whether it be online, etc. And so many of those I've been in contact with 
have mentioned how lonely the path can be and I totally resonate with that it is one thing which brings you to yourself and you definitely become isolated especially in this kind of crazy world that we currently live in if if it's ever a point where it's not crazy I, I don't I don't really know <laughs> but I there was one quote which I read uh, a couple years back which profoundly changed my perspective on this and it was uh, it went along the lines of you will never be alone if you come to love the person you you're alone with <laughs> wow and yeah. it was such a uh, profound insight to me when I read that because I made or it made me realize that what I wasn't trying to do was deny my ego I wasn't trying to demonize it as you can potentially take out of some branches of Buddhism and many ancient cultures as well they essentially in one way or another they almost make you feel guilty for having an ego uh, or at least that's the way i interpreted it at some points and reading that made me realize that all i'm trying to do is sculpt myself is actually become a reflection of my soul in its fullest expression and once i do so my ego will then align with my core being and my core principles at which point I can love myself. And in that, I then come to essentially see myself as my best friend, that I would incorporate exactly who I was and be totally fine with it, which meant that there was no greater person that I wanted to spend my time with but myself. And I don't mean that in a narcissistic manner, but in a manner that I never then had to search for someone to make me happy i never had to search for a particular circumstance or person to be around but i could be totally happy and content in my own company which meant i had enough time to sit there and ponder and comprehend those deep questions which are the only questions which lead us to this place that we we can get to and in doing so you start to just unveil reality and once you click once it that everything just makes sense and you view reality as this giant celebration this this amazing ball of fun where where as you were saying there's no ups or downs there's no highs or lows there's no adversity or luck but there is just this constant flow of synchronicity and this constant dance taking place that you're free you're you're finally beyond karma and you just kind of flow with the essence of life and that is just the the pinnacle of consciousness and what the awakening almost leads to so you can then essentially let go of that loneliness because you have come to discover the greatest gem that you could ever be given in life which is life itself paradoxically which is Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, every angle which you look at life essentially becomes a paradox, but that's the beauty of it itself. That is. That is. In fact, it, it you know, this solitude also is so important in so many levels that uh, that people often like try to, you know, uh, not look at, but in regards to the fact that you will only meet people at the level you've met yourself, right? We've all heard this quote, and this quote is very truthful. If you come from a place of, and this is very simple, if you come from a place of loneliness, the only people you will either attract are lonely people or people that are highly uh, empathic, that are highly empath and yeah. able to um, to see that in you and are willing to help you. Because for me, for example, I find myself to be somebody who can tell, can pick up on people's personality and pick up on how people feel the lack. And I'm able to feel their lack because I'm infinite. I know I'm infinite and I know I, I can do that mm -hmm. without feeling drained. I know I'm able to do that. And um, I, I'm saying I know I'm able to do that based on the experience of having seen other people not being able to do that, which is totally fine as well. Yeah. Um, I think it's okay to be that way it's okay to to not have the best days at times and such and so 
hopefully, you know, with my own YouTube channel, I hope to, um, to, to, to inspire people to just be themselves and not be scared of having to filter people out of their life by being themselves because if eventually you will find the people that are right for you if yeah. you stay true to yourself mm -hmm. that's that's the end and all be all of it all honestly man you i couldn't have said it better myself and obviously there you brought up that you are beginning your youtube channel which is pretty much the reason why this or how this conversation has come about not that we haven't been in contact before but obviously to uh, ignite that flame of the beginning of a, a new chapter uh, in your <laughs> yeah. journey, even though it's all one chapter essentially. <laughs> but it's one book. <laughs> uh, where I wanna where I wanna go with this now, um, yes. and and the way in which I'll I'll introduce this, I guess, is over the times which I have been or the time which I've been following you. You are probably one of the most active people I know in terms of portfolio management when it comes to crypto. And what I mean by that is you're constantly always on the ball when it comes to research and looking into new projects and, and shifting around the, the coins in your portfolio and, and what projects you're looking into and whether you're actually in them or not. But where I want to uh, almost give you uh, admiration is that I will watch your stories on Instagram and you will post a coin and I'll think, oh yeah, this is like, it looked like a great project, but I won't really do any more research on it, whether I'm doing something different, whatever it be. And then five days later, a week later, whatever it be, that coin just pumped a hundred percent. And I was like, damn, <laughs> I was like, wow, you're on the money there. But the thing is, it never stopped. Then the next week you would, you would put up another coin on your Instagram and the same thing would happen and it would all the other coins are just stable or in their retracement phase and you're you're literally picking out these gems so i almost want to begin by kind of depicting your process that you go through to research <laughs> yeah. find the product yeah, and, and also go and and then decide whether they're good enough to add your portfolio because you obviously have like an incredible skill there and i think it'd be something which will be so beneficial for people to hear <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> thank you thank you well i do want to first begin by like you know being a little transparent there, right um <laughs> i do you know i have all the wins and whatnot uh that i'm very proud of of course right and i'm proud to share them as well mm -hmm. uh but you know, when when there's a bear market, you'll notice that nobody really is posting. Or when there's a crash, <laughs> yeah. nobody's posting the coin they've been, <laughs> they've been saying to invest yeah. in, right? So um, I, I'm I want to be as transparent as possible, and I hope to do that as, as well more often, uh, more actively, I should say, on YouTube and such to say, you know, here are the losses I took, and I'm willing to you know be accountable for them. Obviously, yeah. I always say. None of this is financial advice. All of this is entertainment. And I am entertained by being in the crypto market, believe it or not. <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> so I do, I, I do incur loss, right? But um, even with the recent crash, I, I took, I, I did take a loss in fact, but um, I wasn't really, you know, miffed about it or even mm -hmm. uh, nothing about it. But yes, I do think that uh, a reason why I'm able to find some good gems, I'd say, you know, because I don't, I don't almost want to give me the the credit of of being so good at it because I, I'm still in the learning process, um, yeah, and I'm fully aware of it. But I think, I think because of the whole, you know, what we just spoke about, right, the spirituality, all this energy talk and stuff, I feel as though I have an easier time understanding things whether it's on a emotional level or a mental level. So in regards to technology, I'd, I'd put it more in terms of uh, the mental area, though I do think it, it sort of transcends itself in the emotional part, which people call psychology, uh, the human psychology. But all, all these things kind of tie in for me to be able to kind of make a, make the best use of my skill set to find those uh, those certain coins, right? So, uh, you know, I'm a big advocate of Radix, for example, uh, yeah. a coin that I, I, I presented to so many people because um, 
because of so many of these energetical sensations that I get from this point, right? Uh, and again, I do want to give you credit because I remember one of the most important things you told me in regards to crypto was uh, the community. Now, as much as I did acknowledge the community, the moment you gave me that wording, where like mm -hmm. you were making it clear that it was like one thing I look for in Quine is the community. Well, I started acknowledging it and taking it more seriously than I did beforehand. It's so, such a um, powerful aspect when looking at any project. and Right. And I have a certain quote overlooked. in mind, right? Uh, I, I may have told you this one, uh, and I say it to a lot of people, and, and, and this is a quote I came up on my own, but the, the most important flippening that will ever happen in the crypto space, right, is when the idea that the 70% of a coin being the hype, the community, the people that are behind mm -hmm. it, including the team of the developers and such, are able to uh, be, uh, and then the 30%, sorry, being the technology, when that 30% of that that's taken up by the technology is able to overpower the 70% in such that the technology speaks for itself, then the 70%, the people, the communities have done their due diligence to shill or uh, promote the coin yeah. uh, and its value. Um, and it's something that's very important in this space. So, you know, a lot of people, when they talk about cryptos and such, it's almost as if they think there's like this, and in some level, I'm sure there is, but it's almost as if they speak from a place where, you know, these coins are just going to pump from nowhere like nobody as if there's no investor uh no uh, idea of a community being involved yeah. a community of investors but the moment you realize that us as people are the reason why these cryptos are pumping and we, we don't try to undermine it and try to not say that this is not the case and actually are conscious of it i think this is the moment when we start to to really see coins go up and in regards to communities the community that I fell in love with the most that has inspired me to make more research about crypto is the Radix community. Uh, there yeah. is no community like the Radix community. Now, there are other great communities such as XRP community, which I, I consider myself being in and have been following for longer than the Radix one. But the XRP community in uh, retrospect to the... Um, the Radix one is that the XRP community, a lot of them rely more on um, spiritual stuff. They're more spiritual. They're more spiritually inclined than than the Radix community. The Radix community is rational. You will not find a community that have so many knowledgeable people in regards to crypto technology mm -hmm. than the Radix community. Hands on. I've been in the I haven't been in the, the, the market as long as many other people, uh, but I can say this with certainty. And one of the biggest component of the Radix community is that they're actually willing to talk about other coins. And that being at the level it's at is quite admir admirable to say so. Yeah. Um, and on that point as well, the project itself has as much enticement or it has it gains as much by you holding their coin as you gain from you holding their coin and it going up in price because essentially mm -hmm. that's why you are holding it at its root but what's important to know is that once you have bought the coin you are or you've added it to a portfolio whatever it be you are now in that community. And yes. like you say, the community is something which is going to be the leapfrog almost to get them to that next phase of real world utility and, and technological um, admiration, I guess. And it is something which uh, everyone almost needs to keep uh, insight or be aware of when researching their own projects and, and going into new projects especially on twitter because i fell in the trap myself where you will be influenced to get into a particular project by whether it be a tweet a diagram whatever it be 
but you have to know that by you going in and purchasing that coin you are giving as much benefit to that coin as it could do if it provides you a return on investment so you then almost lose the attachment to chasing this or, or this this endless i guess rat race of like looking for like all these winners because you realize that actually you are a key to that success and that there is as much to be gained from their side as there is from yours by going into that and when you realize that you can then almost take a step back from all these influences because you can get so caught up in trying to add all these coins to your portfolio because there's so many out there which look so good <laughs> and everyone's touting like this one that one this one but in reality you need to do exactly and whether people picked up on it or not something you said which really resonated with me was you it's, it's almost like an energetic connection which you feel yeah. with the coin it, it's a deeper understanding and an intuitive sense within yeah. which draws you towards a particular coin and that when if you as an individual can connect with that and you can utilize that when looking into certain projects that will serve you way greater than any research any knowledge any information you gain because it will have meaning and value to you if it's coming from a deeper part of your being and radix radix however you uh, want to pronounce their name they uh they are a, a wonderful community as you say the technology is absolutely mind-blowing and the fact if you if you do listen to some of their uh, amas that they've got they're available on youtube you can see that they have a very clear vision for the future and uh, like you i'm very optimistic about that project and i think that it has a, an insanely bright future and where it is on the scale and how how small relatively it still is 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 a great opportunity to get into if if anyone hasn't uh, previously up until this point heard of it i i i think so too in fact um you know it, it to me radix will most likely be a top 20 if it's not a top 10 point yeah and i say this with such confidence because um you know radix out of all other coins has been so prominent about its purpose than any other coin you know it want it has such a great purpose which is to uh to be the global DeFi of the world to be able to uh offer uh decentralized finance to uh the eight eight nine whatever billion people there is on the world and not only just via one medium but via all any medium right it has infinite yeah. scalability and that's what it's thriving to do and no other crypto is so vocal about this purpose than Radix. Radix has been working on its crypto, or like the the founder and such have been working on the crypto uh, for for almost eight years now, and they haven't marketed themselves to their fullest because they're so concentrated on launching their their phases. Right. Just recently, we had the Alexandria phase, which was uh, where uh, they've introduced the new programming language for DeFi creators to build upon the radix blockchain uh which is uh, some somewhat like how ethereum has solidity mm -hmm. well radix has scripto and i'm actually learning scripto this weekend because uh it, it's said to be very simple very easy to use and anybody who wants to get into programming i highly recommend getting into scripto right away because um it's supposed to be very user friendly um yep. And I myself have actually a, a somewhat of a programming background um, from the age of, of 10, oh, nice. which is actually how I learned about Bitcoin and crypto. But mm -hmm. back then, I learned about Bitcoin and crypto when I was, when I was 10 years old in 2010 um, in some of the, the small forums that used to hang out on. Mm -hmm. And I only got in this year. I, I, it's, it's funny, but but um i'm happy i guess that i got in this year because i it shows that uh, i'm a much more 
I feel like if I had gone in earlier, I probably wouldn't have done any of the due diligence I have done in regards to the crypto market. And I probably would have been uh, well off. But right now, I feel like right now I'm, I'm moving with purpose. I'm moving with more certainty. And I've learned so much throughout my uh, my my experience. And I hope, you know, one of the biggest thing people are always so, um, you know, disappointed of when it comes to the, the crypto journey is not having started earlier. But I think it's important to know that, first of all, we are considerably early if we think of it from a long term um, and on a long term level, but also we're there, like the experience you've had before, you know, I feel is important and is, is, is to be cherished. Uh, had you had been probably in crypto early, yes, your life may have been more abundant on a physical level, but you may have not learned the same thing. So that's also uh, another thing I hope. Yeah, to that is, share. that is, um, that's a, it's a good point to make. And something which always springs to mind on, on timing is that everything is placed in your reality at the exact perfect moment, essentially one, because it's true and that's what makes it true is it's the truth and the truth manifests itself spontaneously at every moment but also the fact that it will come to you at a point when you're ready at that moment to go down that path if that makes sense right. it's almost like like the trigger to your next part of your your evolutionary phase back into absolute nothingness which is totally full of everything paradoxically mm -hmm. but it's funny because you had your awakening and then uh, obviously later down that road is when crypto come into your reality. Whereas for me, crypto come into my reality simultaneously as my awakening begun. And wow. my mentor essentially from the beginning was crypto. And I've spoke about this before in other podcasts, which I've done <laughs> on other channels, but the reason for XRP being such an integral part uh, of myself in terms of my uh, current like attention and focus, but also mm -hmm. um, in my reality is because it was the spark which put my attention on the banking system. And as you know, and as everyone knows who has ever done any research on the banking system, <laughs> that as soon as you go down that rabbit hole, it never ends. And it just <laughs> enlightened my perspective of the corruption of not only the banking system and the governmental structure, but also that everything I knew about the world was a lie. <laughs> and <laughs> the, the ability to have that and, and that process going on alongside my actual internal awakening was so integral because when I would hear something on the spiritual side of the awakening, if I could say that in uh, the sense that may be so outrageously bizarre, I would have no real problem believing it or at least being open to it because I had come to see how backwards my my perspective was on reality so i was able to like open up to these like crazy concepts and ideas because i was like if that's backwards and if that's upside down then maybe this is upside down so they both served each other and for me that's the reason why i almost say it was like my mentor because it, it gave me the ability to humiliate myself in my own inner journey because I only had to look at the world to understand that I knew absolutely jack shit about anything. It <laughs> was the reason or was what gave me the ability to then, or it at least sparked my curiosity to be like, damn, like, right. if I don't, if I am so in the dark, what is there to discover, which ignited this flame. And then, I mean, long story short, just, took me down line up the dark <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that took me down the most crazy epic dark right. light wherever however you want to turn it journey obviously ever that could ever possibly exist and that's where it all culminated together but it's funny because <laughs> it, it, it seems like every i mean it, it's the truth is that everyone's journey 
is so different yet very similar in the way in which crypto and banking ties in to the awakening because they both go hand in hand but where where i want to really quickly just ask you a question on this is how do you like decide on your uh when it comes to your portfolio between the coins which are far more advanced and have uh, real world utility and <laughs> uh global backing or, or or the the backing of institutional banking sectors and the more primitive projects which are closer to their start phase but have incredible potential good question um so you know you know how you said uh, the crypto was your mentor in regards to your spirituality. Uh, very quickly, as it yeah. ties into the answer of this question, right? Um, I did. I actually did get into crypto to test out my energetic work. I, I uh, you know, I, I did say that everything in in regards to in well, in my opinion, is an expression of spirituality, is an expression of energy and such, and crypto is uh, is no exception. I got into crypto last year. Uh, it's very important to know the beginning of how I got into it to understand how I ended up finding all these cryptos. But essentially, I got into crypto, even though I've known it for over a decade. I've got into it like last year, actually. And I remember I started off very small. I started putting $50 in Ethereum. And I remember just watching the, the, the my $50 go up and down and up and down. It was so stressful to me that... Um, <laughs> Clearly, I didn't have yeah. enough energy, like energetical yeah. uh, endurance, to 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 be in the market right away. So I took it out, and I remember I was I was like, I'm going to watch the charts for month before getting into it, so I can find, I can key in something that's gonna allow me to break the matrix in regards to this. <laughs> and I remember I watched the market for about like four months, and. One faithful evening, I remember I meditated. Um, and, and again, I'm not like the most, I'm not a guy who meditates every day. I, I do not meditate every day. Um, I find as though meditation is sort of like a consequence of you having to feel something. It's sort of a state that you can yeah. find, a meditative state you can find once you, you're, you're, you're sort of free of all your, your tasks and such. But this moment, I happen to be meditating. And I happen to be asking myself, like, I want to find this, this coin that's just gonna, that's just gonna, you know, give me all the stuff I want, right, in the physical realm. And I remember I was scrolling down Coin Gecko that night after the meditation, and I found Dogecoin. Um, and Dogecoin back then was not known by anybody. <laughs> and I was like, I, I remember I. This is why I fell in love to cryptos because. It was almost semi impossible for a Canadian like me to buy crypto, uh, to buy Dogecoin at least. It wasn't on Coinbase. Mm-hmm. It, I think it was just on Binance, but I couldn't connect my bank account. Anyways, I went through this whole thing of this whole walkthrough of how to buy Dogecoin. It was so fun. I felt like a nerd and, <laughs> in, in all positive ways. I love, I love the idea of being a nerd. I make being a nerd cool. Um, <laughs> and so I finally got it, got in, and I told my girlfriend about it. Um, and um, she's one of my biggest uh, inspiration in regards to getting my stuff together as well, uh, which is essentially also why I got into crypto because crypto was literally the new phase after I was done with the spiritual leap, literally. Yeah. Um, anyways, so I got into it. I got into Dodge Fire. I remember I was like, I'm so excited. I got a coin that nobody knows, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I put like $100, literally, just, just to try it out. I was like, whatever. And... It's so funny how right now this hundred dollars so insignificant in regards to how much I'm willing to put now. But yeah, the back then it was a big deal. It was a big deal. And I remember the next day, Elon Musk for the very first time posted about Dogecoin. And the day before I told my girlfriend about it, I said, I don't know, I have a feeling this is gonna could do something. And the next day, I shit you not, Elon Musk posts about it. And, I'll, and my girlfriend got so excited, she's like, what the fuck? She just sent me a hundred dollars. She's like, put in a hundred dollars for me. And so we had two hundred dollars. That two hundred dollars turned into five thousand dollars in matters of weeks. And it was like, it, it was amazing because I was like, there I was, 
really utilizing the skill set of spirituality and energy works and, and and being connected to the, you know the energetical grid of the universe yeah. to see to be able to really call something beyond the matrix of time mm -hmm. and so i was like well this is it i'm getting into crypto full time now uh well full time as in like i was really delving into crypto yeah uh, for for good now and and, and it, it's that's how my journey started and now fast forward to now the way i uh, i sort of uh find cryptos that i like it, it's a very interesting question but i really try to do my due diligence right i i know there's the idea of the energetic work i'm i'm a big believer that there's an infinite amount of universes that exist so there's a universe right now that exists where xrp is worth a thousand dollars even if you don't want to believe it it is to me a fact that i cannot prove yet but will be proven eventually likely but um on, and on that on that note really quickly to interrupt you there that go ahead that, that ties in so deeply into the most profound book that i have read in i, I don't want to say in my awakening completely but it was the singular book which without it none of anything else would have been possible because it was the and i've mentioned it quite a few times before it was the book which gave me the full understanding of reality at an energetic level and it was called reality transurfing and it was the the book which almost at that point i began my awakening journey i was very early into it but it was the one which i guess you could say tipped me over the edge it like just took me to that next level of understanding you and, have also mentioned it to me uh, in previous discussion as well yeah. so i knew exactly and, and the reason why i bring that up now is because it is based upon the principle that there is what's called or at least vadim zelin who's the author of it is uh, it terms it called the alternative space and just to quickly give you a little bit of background the the entire book is uh, and the entire understanding of reality came to the author of adam zealand in a dream state where what he termed as a wizard like um figure came up to him and gave him this understanding which he then turned into physical form in terms of the book but without getting too far off track it's, it's <laughs> the idea that it is there is an alternative space which is infinite in dimension and this alternative space has like you say infinite dimensions where every possible reality exists and all you are doing is trying to light up that part of the infinite space because you are the light and you as you make choices in your reality you are essentially either drawing that part of the space closer to you through both attraction of what you become and also your intention or you're moving further away from it depending on your choices so mm -hmm. the 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 basic principle with that is that every reality exists because there's infinite reality because there's infinite universes exactly like right. you said and the only way in which you bring that about is through total belief in the understanding that infinity is infinite and i know it sounds so ridiculous to say that but if you comprehend that that literally means that there is no reality which you cannot not create both right. out of yourself and out of what can come to you so i am in total harmony and agreement with what you're saying there in the sense that there is a reality out there where uh, a coin is a certain price whatever it literally whatever it be whether you believe that or not doesn't matter because of the infinite nature of reality it's the truth <laughs> yes yeah absolutely right and we, we you know um the, the word infinite just to really like put in the put it in there real quickly the word infinite right is yeah. just another example of how to explain something that is hard to grasp but simple to understand right <laughs> It simplifies a concept that would be infinitely, and I mean this on the literal level, <laughs> infinitely hard to grasp. Yeah. Um, and so just wanted to put that out there. And so, um, you know, in regards to this in crypto, I, I, that's how I do my, my, my work, right? I, I, I try to keep a grounded, rational mind 
because that's how everybody else in the community is. So I have to somewhat align or be on that, adapt to that in some levels. But I also always, without a doubt, and even without a certain control, have this outlook of it on an infinite level. It, it's 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 it, once you go through the awakening, even if it's you know something you don't talk about every day, this reality just happens to become reality, right? Um, yeah. Your physical world now becomes spiritual. You now see the divinity in the physical, and you no longer look at it from a place of, well, there's a spiritual and then there's a physical. No, the physical world is the spiritual world as well. This existence, yeah. if you were. And people want to know, like, how can I get an awakening? And I always tell people this. If you want to get an awakening, if you want to induce an awakening without a drug, I challenge you for a whole night to ask yourself, why do you exist? And you will jump into the rabbit hole of the awakening right away. <laughs> yeah. um, it, it's, it's the most simple way of getting into spirituality. That is the, uh, I guess, basic concept of many kind of Eastern uh ancient teachings or, or relatively recent with some of the yogic gurus and mm. them or the way in which they explain just ponder on who you are like literally ask yourself that question and with every answer that you receive go deeper into that and you will literally induce the or you will bring about that there will be no other choice but for you to understand a greater part of yourself in doing your so. answer will now become your question is basically <laughs> yes. what it is and vice versa and it's it's just just the paradox right it, it it's it's knowing how to walk in this paradox being a walking paradox is what being spiritual is that's yeah. why nobody will understand you as much as you try to convince them you you are literally creating a space for them not to understand you by trying to convince them, right? And it's the same thing with crypto. The crypto world, uh, the market or whatever you want to call it, is just a place for me and ho- and I and I, I figure also as well for you to see how my reality mastery is. Mm-hmm. How good am I at manifesting? It's creating uh, my reality. Um, and And so far, it has been a great teacher yeah. um because i haven't mastered reality i talk about spirituality and i i want to really bring this to people so they don't feel lonely nobody is perfect exactly. if, if that was the case you know they probably wouldn't be saying they're telling you all this stuff right we're not perfect uh, even if we speak about spirituality in such in s- such a way where we feel as though we might understand it the reality of it is it's such a broad concept that nobody will ever be able to grasp it at its full level. So be yourself, use crypto as a way to really just uh, test your energy, test the patience you have, right? Because patience is such a big part in the crypto yeah. community. Um, and so to find coins for me is, is very simple. I, I do the due diligence of going into, you know, the telegrams, the Twitter and, um, I use Radix as a foundation. Yeah. The reason why I use Radix as a foundation is because, again, I think Radix is the supreme crypto when it comes to technology. Mm-hmm. Supreme. It, it, and this is no financial advice. Do your own research. But that is what I've stumbled upon based on all the other cryptos I've seen. And having that, you know, that crypto, or that that sort of foundation or whatever, sort of, uh, even not a foundation standard is what the right word is mm-hmm. having the standard of radix there as the highest can be and then seeing all the other cryptos and seeing how they kind of tie in and level into the standard you can make a really good assumption as to uh the tech side right um and the reason why the tech side is so important is because whenever i i introduce a crypto to somebody on my instagram Usually I introduce this crypto because I think that it will be able to, I'm confident that you can, it can last a bear market, right? Radix is one of those cryptos that I know that if ever there is a bear market, which again, I don't really think there is going to be one in regards to how people describe it. Um, Radix is one of those coins that I don't think will ever uh, injure a 
crazy loss yeah. if there was to be a, a bear market. Yeah. Um, so that's really how I find cryptos. In- I, I, I when it comes to so many of the points you're making there, I I am fully on board with all that you said and one thing which brings to mind which i kind of want to pick up on was the way in which i have utilized crypto uh, as you mentioned you do as a means of whether it be understanding yourself better but also just understanding the world and reality better and, and combining that ability of, of becoming a creator and manifesting your reality is i i'm not sure at the point It was around about a year to two years ago that I first had a true realization that what I was viewing when I was looking at the charts was essentially an emotional pictogram. I (laughs) am actually looking at the emotional fluctuations of the collective consciousness with regards to a certain coin or currency. And what that allowed me to do was to then take a step back and rather than this this one-dimensional way in which we're uh, taught to to chart right we're taught to trade which is like search for the patterns search for the confluences have a look at like resistance support levels etc and don't get me wrong obviously they're helpful and they're integral to the process but looking at it from a, a a consciousness understanding which you can see that the they're not just support and resistance levels but they have an emotional meaning to them that it's points where people yeah. were emotionally attached to having to click buy or it, i mean it's a very simplified sense but you can broaden it out and you develop this totally different perspective upon the market and mm-hmm. when i began to understand that when I was then looking at the chart, I was actually watching a, a view of myself on a collective level as to how it reacts <laughs> to certain levels. So I was now up till three in the morning just staring at the charts and I was getting best of both worlds out of that because I was be able to learn the, the chart game, the trading game uh, and the monetary game inside out. Yeah. But at the same time, it was teaching me about myself. And I was like, damn, this is so, so powerful. And for me, more so than being able to create my reality with regards to crypto, for me, the, the passion and the spark comes into the fact that to master the charting trading game is the the hardest mental game in the world because the only way in which you can master it is to be at total self mastery otherwise you will grip to the emotional aspect and then the chart and the market will always move against you so to be able to get into a space within me that i have mastery over the chart and the coin and the currency was a insane motivation and that's the reason why 99.9 percent of people will fail in the markets not because they have a lack of understanding of the market but because they have a lack of understanding of their own emotional nature and when you when you when you make that connection that there, there is a an incredible complementary nature to to the monetary system itself because it's really just a representation of our internal emotional makeup and beliefs and it just infused my reality to, to bring these two of my, my favorite things, that the, the thing that set my soul alight was one, finding truth, and, and two, it attaining financial freedom in, in the physical realm, which both go hand in hand. So, um, what, yeah, just wanted to pick that up because it obviously, as you can tell, resonated with me so much because it has yeah, such, such a great influence. It- Oh my it's God. great what you've been mentioning right there. And, and um, you know, one thing I wanted to to touch on in, in my channel a lot was um, I, you know, you, you spoke about the chart and understanding how like it, the emotional value. And I've actually never um, thought of looking at it that way. And I'm grateful you, you've presented me this this perspective, in fact. Um, and it, it may have changed my opinion on charts uh, slightly 
In fact, uh, I've I've always told people this in in my in regards to me and how I view the chart was that you were right. The charts can give you if you master reality, you can semi predict what the chart is going to do. Mm -hmm. But I find as though in the in the and you tell me what you think of this. I find as though in the community, a lot of people uh, uh, overvalue the chart more than they have to. Um, in regards to more in ter terms of trying to key in the technical parts of it instead of the more simplified parts of it. You know, uh, I find as though there is so much information in everything and chart included, but to really tie in the information comes from like sort of an intuitive feeling more than, than just a technical aspect. And the fact that you've just keyed in this emotional um representation in the chart kind of makes it even more sense to say this that there's this intuitive skill that you can kind of train yourself to really be able to tell what is the next movement that the chart yeah. will, will do um in regard but a lot of people delve so deeply into the chart that oftentimes they lose themselves and and and, and that's something that i hope that you, you know a lot of people get a, straight a little bit away from because there is information there is value in these charts for sure but i've seen a lot of people value them at such a level that that almost makes uh no sense anymore because had they been so had would they have been so good at reading reading the chart at this technical level they would probably have been able to tell all the price actions that yeah. were happening no i, um, I i'm I'm on your level with that. The key distinction that I come to discover was that if you look at the chart as a chart, the chart will destroy you in the sense that if you think you're looking at some candles which are displaying the price and that there are these just like levels and and, and you look at it in that in that one dimensional nature, you will never master the markets that you must come to uh, understand that the charts, I mean, like I said, are ha have such a deeper aspect to them. And it's only through the ability to understand that within yourself, realize it within and, and to then be able to apply that perspective to them that you can really, the best way I can describe it is, is almost get behind the candles and actually look into the, the why of what is causing them to move in the way that they are. And then you're always utilizing it as a predictive tool. It's never uncertainty. You can never be sure of the next movement. Uh, and it's just, that's essentially set in stone and well, isn't that also the paradox, right? That the uncertainty, the the I, the uh, the awareness that you can never be certain, considering the infinite nature of our reality, can sometimes work in your favor. Um, in regards to crypto, that's another thing I've noticed, right? Mm -hmm. um, in how, uh, for example, if you, it's almost as if you create this resistance. If if you come from a place of lack, we always hear this about the law of attraction and such, right? Um, how you come from a place of lack, you will not be able to uh, create the abundance you desire. But in fact, if you can look at something, either it, it, it's such a paradox. If you can look at something from a point where, for example, with Radix, I am so confident. There is no hole in 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 my confidence at all. There's I can feel it in my heart. <laughs> that it's a complete cloak that has no holes whatsoever, right? Um, a perfect sphere that that can roll very well. Radix is how I feel. It. It's immutable. And then when it comes to that confidence, I'm con I know it will attract exactly what I what I see it attracting. But yeah. then when it comes to sometimes you can even attract things from a place of uncertainty, where it's not so much of this uncertainty that's causing you to uh, to, to, to feel a lack, but to just not be, to humbly not be sure about something can also cause you to have this attraction, right? A hundred percent. And, and really quickly on that, where, uh, a profound lesson, which I had 
not too long ago on that point is that the uncertainty that you that lies at every choice whether it be crypto but in life itself as well which then leads to an adverse outcome so perceived in the sense that it went against what you had intended or what you had wished for that adversary or that um that conflict which then arises is actually for your greater good if you choose to humble yourself and learn from it and and where i want to tie that really quickly into crypto is there have been so many instances that i have lost in uh in the markets like whether it be a shit ton of money or just have gone into a, a certain crypto and it just plummeted literally within hours and obviously i mean if, if it was your choice as to the certainty of reality you you necessarily wouldn't have that go against you in that way but I began to realize that my losses were actually more valuable than my wins because of what I was learning from them. Always. Always. And yeah. And that for me was, was amazing because I now I'm in this position where if I make uh, like, if I cock up in any way in terms of my, my decision making, my purchases, I miss out on a coin, whatever it be that, there is as much value in that as me finding a coin which pumps 100 200 the next day so you're never at a loss you may be at a loss in in the physical realm in in the perceived realm but in reality you're always winning which is just another yes. aspect of divinity and i'm sure you can you can kind of uh, resonate Attest with that, to that. Well. yeah right absolutely you know um it, it's it's and and i would even go ahead and, and, and say and just neglect the fact that it is not perceived on the physical realm because for a lot of people you know we we always hear this quote it's, it's like a quote that every businessman says like every loss is like when you earn whatever it sounds almost <laughs> like a, a movie thing but to just kind of key in the, the idea of why this is actually very real is that and especially in the crypto market is that i've always told people you know even my girlfriend and such who, who's not into the crypto market at all um I'm not scared of losing anything in this market because of the fact that you hear of people putting a hundred dollar, for example, on Saitama, which is like uh, another kind of Dogecoin or whatever, and making 150 grand within yeah. the next couple months. These opportunities are always existent. And if you are always in this mindset that these opportunities exist and will always create themselves, then there is no such thing as a loss. There are only newness, there's only creation. Mm -hmm. um if, especially if you mind yourself this way right um and and actually i want to give a quick shout out to one of the other um another person who's into the crypto world who who's also yeah. who ties in some spirituality his name is crypto mason um he he said something to me that you know as a spiritual being or as a human i always tell people that you know never get angry when somebody tells you something that you know you know some people how they get irritated from hearing somebody tell something to them as if they don't know it mm -hmm. i always tell people that especially in spirituality it's so important to listen to other people even if you know their concept because as human beings we need a reminder mm -hmm. and so uh, i remember listening to crypto mason he was saying something as uh, as about manifestation and how if you can imagine yourself uh making it within a week and being so certain of it like if you not even imagine if you accept the fact that the possibility and i'm probably butchering its word but if you can accept the fact that there's a possibility you can make your dreams come true within the next seven days and you live that way and embody it then you're winning and 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 that that to me was so profound um, even though, you know, I know all these concepts that that got him to, 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 to get to that uh, translation of wording, it was so uh, important to me, even in the crypto world, to really understand that like all these losses and such, they, they mean nothing when in the grand scheme of things, my dreams are much bigger than my losses at all time. I and, absolutely love that. And, and, and you, we, we ha it's important to really be aware that opportunities are always ahead. Um, and 
obviously it's a bit easier for me than more people most people because some people will have kids that have much more responsibility than I. I'm, I'm I've just recently turned 22 about a month ago and I have more to lose in regards to the physical realm where it's easier for me to say that I have more to lose mm -hmm. uh, because I have so much to win than most people but it's uh, you know um the circumstance is obviously going to be different but in regards to myself obviously this really 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 defines how I'm really going about the market going about the world going about life you know and in my channel I'm not only going to speak about crypto I'm also going to speak about e-commerce I'm going to speak about anything that can potentially inspire people to uh to create ideas for their own financial freedom right and so well you know what that's really I, where I'm at on that note I think we'll almost start to bring it to a close because I think we've touched upon so many amazing points and subjects with regards to transferred with trans trans what was the name of reality trans surf correct? Trans surfing yeah <laughs> we've trans we, surfed the we've, universe what what the uh the book would describe it as what we have just done is created an energetic pendulum which is uh an energy vortex so to speak mm -hmm. whereby we have essentially manifested this new mind out of our individual minds and created this collective which now has its own energy and that is the consequence of our energies coming together and then people can then essentially through listening to this tap into that and expand their consciousness through through the the frequency of that energy and, and luckily with the thanks to the the technology it's always available we can always yes. tap back into it that's it at any moment but um, honestly my man like this has been a beautiful conversation and definitely. i am excited to say the least to see what you come out with on your channel because you are extremely creative in the way in which you go about uh, life in terms of the way in which you find certain projects but i've also kind of obviously followed you in the nft space and you're well versed and you have a, a whole wealth of knowledge on that as well which i'm sure you're going to elaborate on on your channel as well so i guess to kind of finish it off just like if you want to uh, give everyone a way of uh, contacting you both through social media and your channel and and any yeah. other information you want to provide Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, it was an honor. I was super eager uh, being on your channel. I've been watching your channel for so long. So um, even the fact that you followed me, I was so grateful of it. Uh, being like a part of like uh, the list of people that that you followed was just was just great um, and 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 very very cherishing to me. Wow. Um, and so in in regards to how to contact me, very easy. Uh, I'm the bona fide plug. Uh, I try to plug in everything i can in the most bona fide way and you can find me on uh the, <laughs> you can find me on bona fide plug either on instagram twitter um and youtube i use the same uh same name everywhere so um it's very easy to find me please don't fall for any scam whether it's for reborn or bona fide plug under the comments uh i don't have whatsapp and i don't think reborn has one either right, right. so um, again, do your own research. Nothing in this video was financial or spiritual advice, but um, I would advise you to at least listen to what we have to say. So thank That's you so it. much for having me, Reborn. And what Take I will care. do is I will post all the links down below in the uh, description so that you uh, listeners who are still um, OGs and are listening to the very end of this and, and still listening <laughs> to us as we speak, can uh obviously go below and, and find all those links to go and check them out but i'll bring it to a, a close here and i thank you so much for coming on and joining me and we will certainly have to do this again yeah and i just want to add in one little thing reborn i'm going to make you a new logo um that's for sure yes. uh for your I with the, I, I've, I've spoken to you about this and i'm still going to do it uh give me give me about a week or two and i'll have something cool. for you and i look forward to, to it most definitely take care now okay yeah.